heavyweight boxing fans what's the deal so watch another old fight here man the reason why i'm doing this series is because i watch a lot of old fights so instead of just watching the fights and just keeping it to myself i think i'm gonna start doing just post fight videos to all these fights that i watch man uh so gotta rewind time we're going back to 1954 okay going to go nino valdez the cuban versus tommy hurricane jackson all right so we're going to the 50s uh you're thinking of the 50s man you're thinking of rocky marciano ezra charles igamar johansson patterson walcott ad mentioned uh nino valdez or a foley harold johnson uh bob baker sonny liston roland lastarza um rex lane i mean so on and so forth man and i'm I do I do a lot of research, a lot of studying, just try to up my knowledge on the heavyweight division. I don't know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything, man. So I like to go to <clears throat> each decade and just watch at least three or four fights every other day if I can. And just do research on these fighters, on these forgotten warriors, man. Um, because I think it's paramount that we know the history. At least try to learn it and just educate ourselves and get better. You don't have to be a walking encyclopedia, but... At least try to educate yourself, man, a little bit. And I try to do that. Um, so I was watching this fight. And these were two of the, as far as height and reach and weight a little bit, these were two of the better big men of the 50s that I've researched and came up upon. Uh, Valdez, about, I've got different sources, say 6'3", 6'4", 78-inch reach. Uh, Tommy Hurricane Jackson, around about 6'3". Uh, you know 195 somewhere in there but for that era man these were you know like i said the taller guys of that era because you had guys like patterson who was only six foot charles six foot walcott was six foot marciana was 510 you know so some of the other top guys were a lot shorter you know what i mean um you had some up and coming guys at that time like uh bob baker was about six two so you had some guys they were over six foot but these from the research i've done as far as the top contenders of the 50s these were probably the two best big guys as far as you know reach and height in my opinion um that i've seen um uh, one thing about valdez when i now when i'm watching this fight one thing about valdez man is he used to give up his height and his reach it was crazy watching him fight even when he fought i watched him fight uh a guy named brian london and brian london had been the british empire champion um brian london he actually beat pete rodemaker i seen he beat rodemaker and uh, zora foley when i was looking him up but even in a fight like that man where you would thought he would just because even in that fight and it was towards the end of his career when he was using his jab and just you know stand at a at a distance with the jab he looked damn good then he was just it's like he was more comfortable fighting up close fighting in the trenches like fighting you trying to put a hurt on you rather than just using a jab circling and just winning fights like that uh tommy hurricane jackson got his nickname because of his style his stamina he had a really good left hook in my opinion um he had this thing he would do man where you know he'll be standing at a distance and he would kind of lean go left to right and then he'll come up with left hooks and jabs and i like that about him uh now this fight with valdez the first round valdez coming out using his jab landing in the right hand but then he wanted to get close to jackson and just mix it up with jackson and jackson threw a lot of left hooks seemed like that was the his left side was all the punches he was throwing in this fight was hooks and jabs valdez looked like he just had a little bit more power than jackson in this fight jackson was 22 years old in this fight valdez was 29 years old uh from the research i've done tommy uh hurricane jackson was looked at as one of the up and coming talents i know bob baker was another guy earlier in the decade um just far as talent not the best guy but just far as talent and his size and his reach jackson was looked at as a good up and comer you know what i mean and uh, he has some losses in the decade you know he had his fair share of losses jimmy slade and eddie mentioned and uh two losses to patterson those fights are on youtube actually uh, when he got knocked down knocked out um but then he'll go on, you know, to lose this fight. And then he'll, you know, beat Ezra Charles twice. Um, who else did he beat, man? He revenged the loss against Slade, beat Bob Baker, 
beat Archie McBride, beat Clarence Henry. So he has some good wins too. You know what I mean? Um, I believe that second fight was Patterson was for the world title. I remember watching that fight because that's the fight when he was getting knocked down and then in his corner in between rounds, he was doing like these knee bends. He was trying to get his legs back under him. I believe that was the second fight, man. I watched a lot of fights, so if my details are off a little bit, but I know I think it was the second fight with Patterson. He was he was doing that. But in this fight, though, you know, the second round, they, they come out. I know I'm all over the place, man. But in the second round, they come out. Valdez hits him with a huge right hand that puts her, uh, put Jackson on the ropes. He's actually on the ropes. The ref didn't call it a knockdown or nothing. His, like, body is stretched over the second rope. He gets off the rope, gets battered against the ropes again. He's getting hit with uh, left hooks, overhand rights. He falls down on the canvas. He jumps back up. You can tell his legs were a little bit wobbly. Uh, the ref gave him a standing eight count. And he was like bouncing into the ropes trying to get his legs under him, man. Valdez came out on the attack like always, giving up his height and his reach with his hands down low, winging left and right hooks. Um, Jackson was trying to fight back, man. He was trying to stick his jab out there, but he just spent most of the time after that first knockdown trying to parry shots and try to weather the storm but valdez would not let up on him push him against the ropes um he was trying to set him up for a big right hands hit him with a big right hurt him by this time he's uh in the corner again on the on the other side of the ring just getting battered and hammered just getting set up with right hands he was trying to survive man he threw an uppercut he was in the middle of throwing an uppercut kind of like when uh, holmes fought tyson he was in the middle of throwing the uppercut then boom valdez comes with a huge right hand drops him um valdez gets up he's trying to move around or not valdez but uh jackson gets up he's trying to move around he just didn't have nothing left he didn't have nothing left in them legs man and valdez just just walked him down it was a slugfest. You know, Valdez, I just wish he, he would just use this height. He could have set up a, that knockout quicker than he did if he just would have set it up. But he came out charging out, throwing hooks. Jackson looked like he was coming back, trading hooks with him. Um, Pretty damn good inter entertaining fight. You know, Jackson, he goes down again from a right that hit him on the back of his head. It was funny because he got hit with a shot. He bounced into the ropes, came off the ropes, and then got hit right in the back of his head. He hits the canvas. The refs caused the fight. He gets up. He tries to protest. He was ready to fight back, but the ref called the fight. You know what I mean? So pretty damn good fight. And again, man, these are just videos, man, just to give some light to these fallen warriors, man. Uh, so I'm going to do a lot of these post-fight videos. Hopefully you guys go to them and watch them, man. And go watch these fights for yourself. I'm, I'm still learning, you know, so I don't know everything. I'm still trying to learn about just the times, not just the names and the numbers, but just what was going on during the time. Who did they lose to? Who did they beat after this fight, before the fight? Where were they ranked? Um, Even after this fight, you know, Valdez, he never fought for world title, man, which is interesting. Now, he, he, he was the heavyweight king of Cuba. He won their world title a few times, I believe. Um, he has some losses in the decade to Bob Satterfield. Satterfield was a very exciting fighter to watch. I remember watching him versus Ezra Charles. He got knocked out with a lethal left hook. Probably one of the best left hooks I've ever seen thrown. Um, but Satterfield was a come forward, technical come forward, short guy. That had good power in both hands. Exciting fighter for that for those times. Um, he had other losses to Zora Foley and, you know, Eddie Minchin and Alonzo Johnson. You know, but... He had some good wins too, man. You know, Archie McBride and Harold Carter. Like I said, Brian London and there's a trial. So still learning, man. But this is a damn, damn good fight between two forgotten warriors. A short fight, you know. But that's what happens, man, when guys go in there and they're really trying to beat each other up. And they're not trying to be uh, technical, technically sound about the way they uh, go about fighting. You know, these guys are really trying to put a hurting on each other. I don't think it was so, you know rock em, sock em, robot i just think guys just really wanted to genuinely hurt the other guy quickly and brutal you know what i mean but uh valdez gave up his height in a lot of his fights though entertaining interesting fight i'm out